Hey guys, so I want to start a new series on sound design and I didn't find a fancy name for it yet but I want to call it something like less obvious sound design. Ideally these are going to be tricks or techniques that we can use that are um, hopefully simple and that you might not have thought about before. So for today's video I want to take a look, another look I guess, at feedback loops. We talked a little bit about this in the video I have on comb filters, which you can find on this same channel, um, which is a very similar thing. But I thought it would be fun to use Massive for this since a new version of Massive is, is almost releasing. And I thought, let's let's give this old, very old Massive another try. I haven't used it for a while. And it has a really cool feature here at the bottom, which is this feedback parameter, which is basically just a level control, which we can, um, it, it's you can consider it to be a send, which we can put somewhere inside the signal path. So right now, what I have is a very simple saw wave, a square saw, which is lower to an octave. And then if I go to my routing panel here, I can see that um, the feedback right now is right here in the signal chain and we can see it, it turn up in a couple of places. I can click it here, I can click it here and you can see it draws that line to, to the new routing it creates. So really we can think of this as a send. So if I have this after the amp and I raise this it becomes a little bit louder like we would expect. Um, but in, for our example, I want it to be before the amp because then the amplifier is going to, to boost this signal even more which can create some really rich distortion. Now, um, so what's happening right now is oscillator 1, which is the only one that's enabled. Um, I'll switch these off to make it easier to see. Oscillator 1 is going through our, let's say, filter 1 and then filter 1 has nothing there and then it just goes straight to the amp here. But then, just before the amp, it gets sent again to that same sort of position. So it just adds the signal back to itself and it's gonna circle around. Now that by itself is not extremely interesting. We can, we can hear what it sounds like. You can hear that the, the signal becomes bassier, fuller, and it just becomes thicker. But the really interesting thing starts happening when you actually delay this signal. So let's use our insert effect one inside that sort of loop and then put a simple delay there. We'll put the dry wet all the way up and we'll give it a little bit of delay time. And now let's do the same thing again. There we start to hear this new metallic tone and the frequency that you hear is the timing difference because remember time is the same thing as frequency. So by changing this delay time we can actually create different pitches. Let's try a couple of things. Let's first try setting a performer, syncing that to quarter notes and I'm gonna give it some stepped values, something, something like that. I'm really, I haven't used this in such a while. I need to get used to it a little bit again. Um, but then I'm gonna set this to my timing right here. I'll give it a little bit of amount and dry wet this all the way up and then I'm gonna slowly erase the feedback. So you can hear that the, the longer the delay time, the lower the pitch. So that's that's because there are lower speed, right? Lower frequencies. So this can create, just with using one oscillator, it can create some really interesting results. Now, um, one more fun thing we could add to this is a big ass reverb. So we have to be a little bit careful using these techniques, but they can be a lot of fun. Another thing you can try at this point is um, disabling that performer and using key tracking on this time parameter so that whenever you have a higher note, um, actually you would probably invert this so that if your notes are higher, um, the time is shorter and then the frequency is higher as well. You can 
and here, if I set this oscillator here very low, that we um, we only hear the pitch of the of the delay or the feedback loop rather than the pitch itself. And we could use different things. We can try this with noise as well, um, rather than using a, a square or saw wave. So really cool dark sounds you can get from that. Now, lastly, just, just to show you what this basically is, I'm going to take it one step further. Um, bear with me for a second. We're going to have a little bit of a complicated routing going on. But I want you to understand that what, what is happening here is just a send. It's not... It's not some fancy effect or anything like that. It's just level, and that level gets added and then delayed, and then because it, it loops around, it becomes louder and louder, just like feedback on a guitar would. So to demonstrate that effect, what I did is, um, or actually what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna reset um, massive to be just a standard standard frequency. Let's actually drop it one octave. And then I'm going to disable my noise, disable my feedback, disable everything, the reverb. Um, so nothing is going on now except this one tone. And I'm going to give that a full sustain on the envelope. Right? Super straightforward. So what I'm doing here in my DAW is, um, which is logic in this case, and I try to sort of write down what is happening. I'm sending this SYN to AUX, Auxiliary, or BUS30, which is the one right below here. Then BUS30, I'm sending to BUS31. So you can see the in input at the top and the output at the bottom. And then BUS31, which is right below there, it sends to my output, which is BUS253. And to make that clearer, I can just say send to my output. So this goes to, to what I'm hearing, but it also goes to BUS32, which is the one below here. And then BUS32, you can see the input right here, sends to BUS30 again. So basically, this, this middle bus, it sends to this BUS32, which then sends to this one again. So we're creating a DAW feedback loop. And then on that um, BUS32, which is sort of in between the, the send, um, I can put effects, like I could have, um, send this straight to bus 31 to create a feedback loop but I wanted to be able to insert effects in between the feedback loop just like we did in Massive so that's why I'm sending this to bus 32 and that is just a bus that I'm using for my for my effects and then I'm sending that back to bus 30 where the signal started so now if I raise the fader here and I have a delay and a reverb on there by the way before I do this I should say this is generally not a good idea I'm just I'm just uh, trying to show a concept here, which is uh, feedback loops. So you recognize that same sound, right? But this time it's just happening inside a DAW and you can use this with any synth and you could now record this uh, sound. But mainly I wanted to, to show you the idea. So um, the only thing I'm doing here is delaying that signal and that's when we really start to hear that. But you could put all sorts of effects in between here, like proper distortions. Um, I have a reverb in there. You can see that you have to be a little bit careful with this to not destroy your ears. But if you put a limiter on your master channel, you should be fine in most cases. Maybe take two just to be safe. So thank you guys for watching. And if you would like to know more or when you are interested in private lessons, you can also book a session with me through the link below uh, in the description. Until then, see you in a next video. If you're an aspiring music producer looking for that breakthrough moment to evolve your sound, check out our online mentorship network at Pyramind.com.